Hello, y'all. This is Brian Jensen uh, talking about women's MMA. I think this is my first video that I'm posting on YouTube in a very long time. I'm here to talk about Amanda Nunes versus Valentina Sinchenko. And I'm in here in the middle of Times Square talking about the fight. It has been rescheduled for UFC 215. Hopefully, it's the main event. Um, hopefully, it happens September 9th. It's supposed to happen September 9th, but it's been rescheduled. It was supposed to happen at UFC 213 in July. And it's, you know, it didn't happen because Amanda Nunes, you know, she got sick. Or she said she got sick during the week. Has some cyanitis or whatever you want to call it. And she canceled. Now, a lot of people think that Amanda Nunes is scared of Valentina. I don't think that's the case. Because Amanda had already fought Valentina and she won. But she, at the same time, she knows that this is probably going to be the toughest fight of her career. So she didn't feel 100%. And you don't want to fight Valentina not feeling 100% because Valentina is going to bring it. Valentina, in my opinion, has better stamina than Amanda. Valentina has better stamina. She has better cardio, better endurance. And she fights stronger as the fight continues. After the first two rounds, which is 10 minutes, she gets stronger, she gets better. Sometimes she can be a fast starter. Sometimes she can be a slow starter. She was a slow starter against Nunes because Nunes is usually a fast starter. And Nunes was able to get off first in the first two rounds. And Valentina came on strong in the third and clearly won the third round, dominated. Against uh, Sarah Kaufman, Valentina was a fast starter. She got off strong in the first two rounds and she lost the third and she won by split decision. Personally, I think it should have been a unanimous decision because Valentina clearly won the first two rounds. But, you know, it depends. This rematch could go, it's 50-50, it could go either way. I think Valentina will most likely win by a decision or a submission in the fourth and fifth round if Amanda really gasses out and just basically gives up. If she tires out and gives up, then that's it for her. She'll lose her title. She'll lose her title and Valentina will be the new champion. Now Valentina's trainer, I love him. I love her trainer, he's a genius. He's been training her for 20 years. He's been training her sister for 20 years. Antonina Sinchenko. And I think their trainer has a plan. He really has a plan. I agree with some people that are saying that on YouTube. He has a plan. Antonina wants to come to MMA. She's coming to MMA in September. She's probably going to fight in the bantamweight division in UFC. And next year, I guarantee you that Valentina will move down to 125 pounds. And she might end up fighting Joanna Joncheche. She might end up fighting Joanna next year. International Fight Week in July, or maybe we'll be in the fall. And that's why I was happy that Joanna called out Valentina. She called her out because she knew that was the perfect opportunity to hype up a fight between her and Valentina. It was the perfect opportunity. And this is a fight that I've been predicting that would happen since last year. I've been wanting Joanna and Valentina to fight each other since last year. It's going to be an epic fight of just striker versus striker. I think Valentina might be the better striker. Even though Joanna has adapted her striking and her stand-up to fit more with MMA than Muay Thai. And Valentina kicked Joanna's ass in Muay Thai three times. But those fights happened eight years ago. That's eight years ago. Joanna's probably become a better fighter, a better striker, better at everything. So we can't really be able to make a, a prediction on how their fight in MMA will go in comparison to their Muay Thai fights. Because Muay Thai is a different philosophy from MMA. It just is. But if Ioana wants to try and all of a sudden become a wrestler and try to wrestle a Valentina and get her to the ground because she doesn't feel confident in her striking, then Valentina is going to give her that work. She's going to outwork her, she's going to outstrike her, might knock her out, might submit her. And then Valentina will be a, the first female ch uh, champion to become a world champion in two different weight classes in the UFC at 125 and 135. See, Valentina's trainer, I think he has a plan. He's planning for this. I mean, in the next three years, Antonina Sinchenko and Valentina Sinchenko might be champions in two different weight classes. It'd be like the Klitschko brothers in boxing. The Klitschko brothers had championships in the heavyweight division. They dominated the heavyweight division for about 10 years. And the Charlo brothers. The Charlo brothers had world titles in the same weight class at, one, at 154 at junior middleweight. This is what Valentina's trainer wants for the UFC, except in women's MMA. Valentina, a champion at 125, and Antonina Sinchenko, champion at 135. This is a plan. 
But we'll have to see. We'll have to see how Valentini does against Ioana. We'll have to see how Ioana deals with 125 pounds. Because Ioana is dominating 115. She's really the greatest strawweight to ever live uh, of any organization. And Victor has 115. I'm pretty sure if, Ioana, if Bellator had 115 pounds at Bellator in women's MMA, Ioana would dominate that division too. She's really the greatest at that division, but we'll have to see how she deals with 125. And I honestly don't see anybody really beating Ioana at 125 except for Valentina. Unless Dana White signs Mackenzie Durham to come to 125 at the UFC and Mackenzie Durham's a champion uh, in the next few years. Well, it depends. It depends how the Ioana Valentina fight goes. Because I can see Mackenzie Durham giving Valentina and Ioana a lot of problems. Because Mackenzie Durham, she's a big woman and she's really skilled, skilled at jiu-jitsu. She's really the greatest jiu-jitsu artist we've ever had in America. She's won gold medals. She's won championships. She managed to submit uh, Gabby Garcia, the biggest woman on, the, on planet Earth. And Mackenzie Durham managed, I think, to submit her over two years ago. She definitely won. Mackenzie definitely won that rematch. She lost the first jiu-jitsu match with Gabby Garcia over three years ago. They had a rematch two years ago in 2015, and Mackenzie managed to win. So I'd be looking forward to seeing her in the UFC. She's going to be, she's going to be a banger. But I think Valentina's trainer, he has a plan. Antonina Sinchenko is coming to MMA. She'll become a world champion at bantamweight because a lot of the women in the bantamweight division are getting older now. They're starting to age. Antonina, she's not a spring chicken. I think she's in her early 30s. But she's really in the prime of her career as a fighter. And MMA, she's going to bring a whole, whole striking arsenal to women's MMA at 135. And she get past Nunes, she's beating everybody because it's right, it's right for the picking of bantamweight. Especially if Valentina wins the title from Nunes and moves down to 125. This is a lot of speculation. We don't really know yet. We don't know what's going to happen. But this is my prediction. I have Valentina winning by a decision or a submission against Amanda Nunes in September, if the fight happens, if Nunes manages to show up. And then next summer, in International Fight Week, I think Valentina will move down to 125 pounds and fight for the belt. I think she'll fight Joanna. If Joanna moves up to 125 next spring and beats the champion at 125, because Tough 26 is going to be all about women flyweights. It's going to be about the 125 pound division. I think it's going to be about 16 women fighting in a tournament. And the winner of the tournament will become the UFC champion by December of this year. Because the new season is going to be supposed to premiere, I think, in September. It's going to be 13 episodes. And the last episode will be around, I think, November or December. And the winner of that tournament will be fine for the UFC title. And whoever wins that title isn't going to be champion for long. So. They're going to win the title, and they're going to lose to Ioana next spring. I think in March or April. That's what's going to happen. The champion will most likely lose to Ioana or Valentina. And, Val and whoever becomes a champion at 125, whether it's Ioana or Valentina, those two women will fight each other in International Fight Week of next year. And what worries me is that Amanda Nunes doesn't seem to be training. She seems to go back to eating. I'm worried she's going to be making the same mistakes she made back in July because Valentina is training right now. You go on her Instagram, she's training in the gym right now. She's focused. She's dancing, she's training, she's shooting guns. She's keeping her mind sharp and she's keeping everything on point. She's still working out. I just hope she doesn't overtrain because if she overtrains, she might gas out against Amanda. Or she might have an injury and then the fight gets postponed again and then we're left without a fight between Nunes and Valentina. I hope this fight happens September 9th. This is the biggest women's MMA fight in, in women's MMA history because we have two world-class fighters fighting each other. You know, this isn't, you know, Ronda Rousey, just a judo artist, grappler, fighting Misha Tate, who's inconsistent. Like, there are times where Misha Tate is good, and then there are times where she's terrible. You don't know which Misha is going to show up. Whether it's going to be Misha, who's going to win the title, or Misha, who's just going to get her ass beat. We just don't know. But Misha and Ronda were good and dominant or winning at a time 
when the bantamweight division was still evolving in women's MMA, and the bantamweight division is still terrible, but it's getting better, it's getting more skilled. It's nowhere near as good as strawweight, and I think flyweight is going to be the best division in all of women's MMA out of any organization. Bellator, UFC, Invicta, doesn't matter. But we'll have to see. This is Brian J. I go to MMA and NYC once a month. We watch MMA fights. And I'm here to talk about women's MMA. This is pretty much all I want to talk about. This is all I want to cover. Because everybody else is talking about men's MMA and men's boxing. I love men's boxing, but I love women's MMA. This is what I'm going to be talking about. So you have a good day. I'll talk to you all later. This is Brian J. I'm out.